an s orbital is a sphere. A p orbital is a dumbbell. And these are just shapes that describe the probability of finding an electron in that space. So in an s orbital, the electron could be anywhere in that sphere. In a p orbital, the electron could be anywhere above or below the nucleus in this nice little dumbbell shape. Now I want you to look at these three different types of sigma bonds and then this pi bond and see if you can tell me where the electron overlap is in relation to the nuclei. And again, the nuclei are right here and here, there, 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 there. So let's look at these sigma bonds. Where is the overlap in the electron regions? Well, it's right here. It's shaded. So this is the overlap and it's actually between the two nuclei. So if the electron region overlap of a bond is between the nuclei, then we call it a sigma bond. All single bonds are sigma bonds. Pi bonds occur when the overlap is above and below the two nuclei and it's not directly between it. Pi bonds are weaker than sigma bonds. So you could take two p orbitals and have this overlap to form a pi bond. Sigma bonds can form between two s orbitals, an s orbital and a p orbital, or this could be a hybridized orbital. Two sp hybridized or two p orbitals, however it works out, just a sigma bond is, occurs when the electron overlap is between the nuclei of the atoms. A single bond is a sigma bond, a double bond is a sigma bond and a pi bond, and a triple bond is a sigma bond and two different pi bonds. So because a pi bond is weaker than a sigma bond, a double bond is stronger than a single bond but not twice as strong. A triple bond is stronger than a double bond, but not three times as strong as a single bond. So you just remember that, oh yeah, the pi bond's not as strong as a sigma bond. It's overlaps not directly between those positively charged nuclei. So that makes sense. It's, it's weaker. So yeah, triple bond is stronger, but not three times as strong as a single bond. So those are the different types of bonding. So, oh, those were all sigma bonds. One, two, three, four sigma bonds. So remember, sigma bonds are single bonds. So this okay, central carbon has one, two, three sigma bonds and one pi bond. So a double bond remembers a sigma and a pi bond. This carbon is sp2 hybridized. There's one, two, three. There's three regions getting as far away as possible, so it's called sp2 hybridized. And the bond angle would be 120 degrees because there's three regions. 360 divided by 3 is 120 degrees. So I've added the two hydrogens on this carbon and then two hydrogens on that carbon. Now the question is when oops, these two carbons come together to bond and form a double bond, do they come together like this where the hydrogens are on different planes or do they come together where the hydrogens are all in the same plane? Well, if you remember that a pi bond is a p electron orbital overlap, then you'd know that they come together with these hydrogens on the same plane so that these two sp2 hybridized orbitals can overlap and then these yellow p orbitals can actually overlap when those white hydrogens, I lost one, but you can kind of see it, the white hydrogens are all on the same plane, the p orbitals can overlap and then this sp2 orbital can overlap. So we actually hand a pi bond when these two carbons come together and bond. C2H2. Alright, this carbon has two regions getting as far away as possible, so it's linear and it's S-P hybridized. There's a sigma bond here and a sigma bond here. So there's two sigma bonds getting as far away as possible. These are two separate pi bonds. So you have a sigma and two pi bonds that make up a triple bond. And each one of these dashes mean represent two electrons. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in a triple bond, two electrons in a single bond.